Aghamazing day to all. This is Teacher Dan Rogayan, your aghamazing guru, and welcome to another episode of our Let Review Drill for Science Majorship. But before that, let me first uh, share my slide. So for our uh, Let Review Drill so, uh, for, to, for this episode, we'll be focusing on meteorology. So this will be our Let Review Drill number three. If you haven't seen our let review drill number one and two, uh, kindly check in our uploaded videos here in my YouTube channel. All right, so let us all be reminded, of course, of our goal to pass and even top the board licensure examination for professional teachers. And uh, let's manifest that you will all pass the board exam. Okay, as I mentioned, our focus would be on meteorology and we're, we'll be covering two learning outcomes as uh, indicated in the PRC's uh, Enhanced Table of Specification, particularly under Earth Science Meteorology. So this will be first explain the interconnections of land, ocean, and atmosphere to human life on Earth. And second, illustrate the cycles of water, carbon, rock, and other materials that sustain the inhabitants of planet Earth. So this will be the two learning outcomes for our 10 item um 10 item uh let review drill for this episode so please uh be ready with your paper and pen para sabayan ninyo ako sa pagsasagot ng ating 10 items uh 10 item questions for this episode okay so i think everybody's ready number 1 what drives the interaction between the ocean and atmosphere leading to weather patterns like el nino a. Ocean salinity, B. Ocean currents at atmospheric pressure, C. Earth's magnetic field, or letter D. Tectonic plate movements. So what do you think is the answer? Teacher top natures. All right. So for this question, the answer is letter, that's correct, letter B. Ocean currents and atmospheric pressure. So basically, this actually drives, no? Uh, the interaction no, between uh, the ocean and atmosphere. So as you can see, no, the interaction of the ocean currents and the atmospheric pressure drives the large-scale weather patterns like that of the El Nino or the Southern Oscillation, okay? So altering the global climate system, okay? So next, so what's the difference between El Nino and La Nina? So El Nino and La Nina are Pacific Ocean climate patterns that affect weather globally. For El Nino, no, it is characterized by warm water and weak trade winds. No, in layman's term, no, we call it tagtuyot. No, so there's drought. No, during El Nino. On the other hand, La Nina is characterized by cool water and strong trade winds. Ito naman yung tuloy tuloy no na pagulan. Alright, so that's El Nino and La Nina. Number two, how do land masses influence local weather conditions? A, by increasing atmospheric pressure. B, by changing wind patterns and precipitation levels. C, by reducing humidity levels in the ocean. Or letter D, by generating high altitude clouds. Okay, so what is your answer for this question? All right, so the answer here is letter Letter B, no, by changing wind patterns and precipitation levels. Okay. So you know, we are always um and we always encounter you no know, the air masses, no, which are forced to flow over high topography, and we call this as orographic effect. As you can see from this windward, no, there is a presence of precipitation. This is characterized by a precipitation, while the leeward uh part of the mountain no is characterized naman by uh very hot temperature where you can see here the sun rising. So air is forced to rise, cool and condensed, leading to higher precipitation, rain or snow. No, it could be rain or snow. While in the leeward, of course, air descends, warms, and dries, resulting in less precipitation. So that's uh, uh, what we call the orographic effect. Okay. So land masses, no, through their topography and surface characteristics, influence wind flow and rainfall distribution, creating the local climate. So you can see here the 
uh, windward and the leeward part of the mountain. There's a prevailing wind here. Then you have your precipitation due to the warm, moist air rising over high ground and air cools and condenses forming the clouds. Well, here you can see on this part, the leeward part of the mountain for the dry air descending and... Okay. So third question, what is the primary role of the atmosphere in supporting life on Earth? A, absorbing solar radiation, B, reducing volcanic activity, C, storing groundwater, or letter D, providing oxygen and regulating temperature. What's the primary role of our atmosphere in life support on our planet? Okay, so for this, of course, this is letter Yes, it's providing it it's about providing oxygen and regulating temperature. So basically our um okay, let's go back here. Our uh atmosphere will actually uh has something to do no with the provision of oxygen, which is very necessary for uh, living organisms such as uh, animals and humans, and of course regulating temperature. That's why um uh, it's uh important that uh we avoid no using the uh chemical uh, using uh, i mean using substances which are rich in chlorofluorocarbon that depletes the ozone layer so once our ozone layer is depleted no there would be a uh, harmful no uh, ultraviolet radiation and apart from that of course no um without our atmosphere there would be no protective blanket so that is on the uh, atmosphere supporting life on our planet. Number four, which of the following contributes to the Earth's climate system? A, land, ocean, and atmosphere interactions. B, human activities alone. C, solar activity without atmospheric influence. Or letter D, ocean salinity changes only. Okay. What is the answer? Future science top notchers. Future science LPT top notchers. For this question, the answer is letter, right? It's land, the ocean, and atmosphere and interaction. So basically, Earth's climate system is a result of the dynamic interaction between the land use or the land cover change here, the ocean, okay, and of course, the atmosphere. So basically, Earth has a complex interrelated system, okay? So next question, question number five, which cycle is responsible for regulating Earth's temperature and greenhouse gas levels? A, rock cycle, B, carbon cycle, C, nitrogen cycle, or letter D, water cycle. Okay, so what is the cycle responsible for Earth's temperature regulation and greenhouse gas level? Of course, that is letter, yes, it's letter B, carbon cycle so carbon cycle actually um is a uh, uh, composed of different processes no uh, as you can see here we have six major uh, processes no involved in carbon cycle number one the carbon fixation or, or photosynthesis you can see here the photosynthesis here no where uh producers convert carbon dioxide into sugar so the process of photosynthesis which are mainly being done by plants no uh which is of course autotrophs okay we also have respiration okay so here no respiration uh where sugars are converted back into carbon dioxide so cellular respiration naman is the reciprocal no of photosynthesis we also have number three sedimentation no you can see burial here sedimentation burial so some carbon can be buried no so that's part of our sedimentation Okay, number four is extraction. Human extraction of fossil fuels brings carbon to Earth's surface where it can be combusted. So extraction is another uh, process no, involved in carbon cycle. Number five is the carbon exchange between atmosphere and the ocean. So you can see that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and carbon dioxide dissolved in water are constantly exchanged. So there is what we call exchange here. Okay, so there is a dissolved carbon dioxide. There, we also have atmospheric carbon dioxide here. Then we can also see here, of course, the process of photosynthesis and respiration, even in our uh, marine ecosystem. And lastly, of course, combustion number six. Now, combustion converts 
fossil fuels and plant material into carbon dioxide. So we have here the combustion. Okay, so these are a uh, very crucial steps no? and processes in our carbon cycle. Next, number six, in the water cycle, what is the process of water turning into vapor cold? A, precipitation, B, evaporation, C, condensation, D, sublimation. Okay. So what is this? No, Water turning into vapor. Okay. So that is evaporation from liquid water to gas. No? To gas, no? Through the for, uh, to, in the form of water vapor. So from liquid to gas, that is evaporation okay so remember that evaporation is one of the very um important steps in our water cycle or hydrologic cycle so we have here evaporation no followed by condensation precipitation and then collection these are the four uh, major steps of our water cycle we start with evaporation then condensation precipitation and collection so Remember also the sequence because it was already asked by the board exam, no? uh, the, the correct sequences of the water cycle. And remember that in plants, we also have evaporation. No? We call uh, the evaporation in plants as, that's correct, transpiration. Very good. Next, number seven, which human activity disrupts the carbon cycle the most? A, deforestation. Deforestation, B, irrigation, C, mining, D, urbanization. So what do you think? No? Disrupts uh, the carbon cycle the most. Of course, that is letter? Correct. No? That's letter A, deforestation. No? So the removal of trees no? from in our mountains and even in our terrestrial territories or terrestrial areas. Okay? So in the Philippines, no, uh, based on November 2020 data, uh, you can see that the deforestation the Philippines shrinking forest cover due to state sponsored logging. So our fo current uh forest cover no is uh 7 million hectares out of 30 million. So very ano na lang to, very few. No, you can see the from 1600 to 2020, you can see that very few na lang of our forests are uh, considered no uh virgin forest and has really forest cover. 47,000 hectares of forest are being destroyed annually. So this is a dismal state no, of our forest cover in the country. And uh, this is a serious uh, problem because it really disrupts our carbon cycle and eventually you know, um, contributes to climate change. Okay, so next, number eight, what is the term for carbon stored in the ocean, soil, and fossil fuels? A, active carbon. B, dynamic carbon, C, sequestered carbon, letter D, residual, residual carbon, okay? So how do you call these carbon stored in ocean, soil, and fossil fuels? So that is actually sequestered carbon, no? These are stored in ocean, in soil, and in our fossil fuels. So when we talk about carbon sequestration, it's a process of capturing, storing, and isolating carbon dioxide, or other forms of carbon to prevent its release into the atmosphere, thereby mitigating the effects of climate change. So you can see here that trees capture atmospheric carbon dioxide, which is uh, a process no, of a natural sequestration. Now we also have here capture and separation, which actually goes to the soil amendments. So some carbon goes to soil amendments. There are also in uh, artificial sequestration where carbon dioxide in giant injected artificially and depleted oil in depleted oil gas reservoir whole mines and even deep aquifers no there are also uh, dissolved carbon dioxide in water like pond no with bacteria okay so next number nine what happens during the condensation stage of the water cycle a water vapor rises due to heat b water is absorbed by plants c water flows back into the ocean or letter d water vapor cools and forms droplets okay so what happens during condensation in our hydrologic cycle so that is letter what's your answer future lpt science tap natures that's correct water vapor cools and forms droplets so that is letter D. So in uh, condensation, no, 
of course, no, after evaporation, no, there is rising vapor, particulate matter. So condensation vapor turns into tiny water droplets and ice crystals. So water droplets mixed with particulate matter no, through these, uh, what we call the aerosols, and atmosphere saturated with moisture forming the clouds. No? So once um, after the condensation, then of course through the clouds there will be precipitation either as a rain or as a snow sleet or hail okay so next last number number 10 what is the primary role of the water cycle in sustaining life on earth a balancing earth's rotation b distributing fresh water across ecosystems c controlling ocean currents or letter d reducing soil erosion so what's the primary role of water cycle okay so the answer is letter that's correct now letter b distributing fresh water across ecosystems now if we're going to look at the percentage of water in our ecosystem no, our water no, basically compared to the land is around 71 percent no 71 percent water then 21 percent land area that's why we have how many uh, continents again so we have seven continents and how many oceans again we have five oceans if we're, if we're going to uh uh make no all the waters 100 percent, this is the distribution so in terms of the distribution of water 97 percent are saline water no is saline water which of course can be found in our oceans in our five oceans no What's the largest ocean again? That is Pacific Ocean. The other 3% is the fresh water. Okay, imagine that. Only 3% are is fresh water. And if we're going to um further subdivide our fresh water, 77% of the fresh water are in the ice caps, glaciers, and inland seas. 22% are groundwater, and the other is 1%. Okay, now if we're going to look at the other 1%, you know, these other 1%, we have uh, in the atmosphere and soil moisture, 39%, lakes at 61%, and rivers less than 4 over 10%. Okay, so basically this is how we, uh, di this is the distribution no, of water, particularly on the 3%, which is fresh water. Okay. So I think that this, that's the end of our uh let review drill no for this episode no let me know in the comment section ilan na nakuha nyo out of the 10 uh questions that we have um uh reviewed no for for this episode so laban papasa tayo keep fighting future LPT top natures and uh see you no again in our next episode for our let review drill so don't forget to subscribe to my channel and till next time.